Have you ever had that dream of wanting to learn to draw, but you're ready to give up because you say to yourself, I have no idea what I'm doing, or there's no one around that can draw that can teach me. Well, I've got a secret for you. The secret that you don't know is you've probably been drawing for years now, but no one told you so that you can put it together. Well, I'm here today to tell you that secret so that you can see and understand, yes, you can draw. Hi, my name is Brian Proctor and I am a self-taught artist. I am a comic book artist. I do children's books. I teach in college and in high school, or I have taught in college and in high school, but now I spend my time doing comic books, children's books, drawing books, and teaching on my YouTube channel as well. So I'm gonna teach you the secret. I'm gonna show you that you can actually draw. So stay with me, watch this video, and I guarantee, I guarantee at the end of this video, you'll be walking away jumping for joy because you will say to yourself, wow, I could draw all this time. So let's go to the drawing table and let's get started and I will unlock that secret of your true potential in becoming an artist. Let's go. Okay, and welcome to my drawing table. This is where the imagination comes to life. Now, you might not have a drawing table, but all you need is a piece of paper and a pencil and a nice quiet place to think, and then you start drawing and your imagination will come to life. So, let me show you some things. A lot of you out there might say, oh, I can't draw, I can't draw. First of all, never say that you can't do something. Just say, I really don't know how to do it yet, but I will learn to do it. And then anything you want to do, you'll be able to do it. All right, so you have been probably drawing for the longest time and you didn't know it. So what is drawing? A drawing is shapes. It's just making shapes. Let's do this real quick. If you take a shape like this circle, and you take another shape and you stack that shape on top of that and you take another shape and you stack that shape on top of that then i'll take another shape and i'll stack that shape on top of that and let's say just take another shape and i'll just put that shape right there and i'll take another shape and another shape and another shape and another shape and you see where i'm going with it that's what drawing is a lot of times when people want to draw something Let's just say this Garfield, for instance. They'll see this and they'll say, oh, well, there's, no, there's no way I can draw that because there's too much detail. See, what you do is people, they look at this and they look at it as a whole, not just this is, this is a shape here, this is a shape here, this is a shape there, and then just putting shapes together. Because that's what drawing is. It's taking a shape, it's turning it, it's twisting it, it's stacking shapes, it's taking away from it, it's adding to it. And when you do that, you are drawing, you are creating pictures. And that's all it is. So whenever you see something that you might want to draw, don't say, oh, it's too hard, it's too hard. It's just look at the shapes in it. And let me show you this. Because when I say you've already been drawing, you've probably already been drawing. Look at this. So if I take the letter E, capital E, right? And then I put a line down the center and I erase this. I have a square, all right? Now, if I do this and this and this, now I have a cube. From that letter E, I just did a cube. Now, a lot of times, a lot of young artists have trouble doing this, making a three-dimensional cube. It's called three dimensions because you see three sides of the cube. So watch this. If I take four Zs, right? Let's just say I said Z. And then on top of this, I'll put another Z. So this is the bottom of the Z. So I'll put a Z right here, right? That's two Zs over here. Let's just put a line, just a set of line because I don't want it to go too far. I will extend this and I'll make another Z and the Z can go right through here. And then over here, I'll do another Z. And so the Z is gonna to connect to the bottom. So this is the top, this is this, and this is that. So I've done four Zs. Now out of those four Zs, 
I want to show you this. Put it in right here. So now I have my square. And let me use um, a pen so I can darken this. And never draw with the ink pen first. If you just want to sketch, and the difference between a sketch and a drawing is, is a sketch is something that you really don't care about. You just play with it and then just throw it away. No pressure. So now I have this, which is this. And then if you follow the lines with the Z, I have this, this, this. This is already there, and I'll just bring a line down there. And now you have that cube shape. So it's very easy to draw, but the thing is no one showed you this secret. And this is a little secret that I had to come up with myself because when I was young, I had the fire to draw. I loved looking at comic books, but there was nobody around in my area, I don't think there was any books out on how to draw comics or how to draw this. Not yet, because I was born way, 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 way back in the day. So I had to teach myself by just looking at things and saying, hey, everything is a shape. Everything is a shape. What does this shape look like? So you have to be able to take something, take one of the shapes, and let me do this first. There are three main shapes. There are three main shapes. There's going to be the triangle. There's going to be the square. And there is the circle. Okay, those are your three main shapes that you need when you draw. And like I say, when you draw something, a shape, you're going to take a shape, you're going to pull it, you're going to twist it, you're going to bend it, you're going to flip it over, you're going to subtract stuff from it, and you're going to add stuff from it. For instance, let's say the square. Let's chop this off, chop that off, chop that off, chop that off. Take this away, take this away, take this away, and take that away. Now I have an octagon, which is just a, a stop sign, okay? So, let's look at each shape individually and then draw some things from it. Now, this, your triangle, is very important when you're drawing background, a lot of background. Now. If you look at this, if you do this, that's your letter A. You have, how many times have you drawn the letter A? And when I say draw, I'm saying draw, not write. The, when we write something, we're taking these shapes, which we call letters, and we're putting them together because these certain shapes or letters, we have given sound to it, like L, O, V, E. And it's la, uh, v, uh. So we're taking these letters and we've taken these shapes. We call them letters and we put sound to them. And when we write them next to each other, it becomes a word. But if you just take an A, to me, that's drawing. I'm not trying to, to sound it out. I'm not trying to put any, anything next to it. So that's, uh, that's drawing. And I can take that drawing and I can expound on that and just turn it into just art. And that could be anything. It could be a tower. That could, it could, that A could have some wings. So when you take these letters and you add something to them, add an extra shape to them, or, or take the shape away, or flip it, or reverse it, as I say, then they become shapes, and shapes become objects, which are your pictures. Like the this A, if I flip that A over, it becomes a V. If I take this out, then you have that V. We've already, I've already shown you how to do a simple square. Let me pull this down so you can see. A simple square and showed you how to do a cube. Now, what are we starting? We're starting with the, since we started with the square, let's, 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 let's continue with the square. Put a paper over. Now, as I was saying, if you can get um, something with a shape to it and just look at it and draw it, this is the boring part. This is the, the boring part is just, you know, drawing shapes 
continually drawing shapes. It's just remember E, you have your E, you have your F, you have your X. There's several, there's several letters, Z, which can become a cube. If you if you're having trouble just drawing a, a just a straight square, write out these letters or draw out these letters. Um I, and these are all capital letters. Well, you can use a T. And I think there might be one more, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to do it. So all you have to do is extend the inner part, bring it down, make another E out of this, bring it down, across, across, down, down, Z. You already seen the Z, down and up and down, same thing, turn that. So now you have no excuse to say, I can't draw a square. It's so easy, especially if you use your notebook paper, it's really easy to do that. So turning a square into something, and I'm gonna add extra shapes to it. Let's just say I have this. This is a rectangle, so when you take a, a, a square and you pull it out or add another square to it, erase the center, and you have a rectangle, okay? So now let's say this is a rectangle, This and I add, which is the easiest thing to do. This is how most we, most artists, we start out, we draw the house. And I add that letter A on top. This is the big letter A right there. We have the makings of a house. Add another square right here. This is my door. Another square right here. That's my window. Another square right here. That's my window. And then just do a plus sign. Plus sign. You have a window. You have a house. Okay, so let's say I want to do a driveway, like or um, um, sidewalk, walk into the house. What I'm going to do is that A again, except I'm going to chop that A off. Let's just say, here's my A. Okay, I've got to keep this on camera. I've got my camera really close. I'm going to pull back so I don't have to keep adjusting. Here's my A, right? So I want to chop this off right here. I'm get rid of that right there. Take the top of that A off. So this is not a pointed A. This is one of your flat head A's. So I'm going to do right here A. See if I if I did the if I did the pointed A, it would go all the way into the house. But I'm going to chop it off right there at the front of the doorway. And I can even have that piece. I don't know what that is. Probably there's probably a name for that. But then I'll just add some more. And now you have a walkway. So all I've taken was just a square, which could have been an E, F, X, uh, I, T. And then I made them put another A on top of the house. Now you have, you're making for a nice little house. And if you want to do a chimney, you can put another square here. Oh, this is more of a rectangle. Draw it into the roof. Draw it right into the roof and then just erase that. And you can have your smoke, it's, it's winter time. Let's say some trees, some some um, some Christmas tree. I don't know what these actually call, we just call them Christmas trees instead of doing the, the actual other tree. So we have a little Christmas tree in the background or fir tree, I don't know if they're fir trees like that. <clears throat> and you can have a fence which is just another long rectangle. And then you just put your slats in there. I think those are slats, what you call those? You know, and then you have your little fence in there and then you can put one on the other side and then you have a house just using shapes. It is very, 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 very simple to draw when you are shown how to draw. So let me pull this camera back just an inch or so. All right, so I think that'll do. now. I don't want to say one shape is more important than the other shape. Remember, you have your square, your circle, and your triangle, okay? Those are your three shapes, your main shapes that you draw with. Now, if you look around, you look at anything, it's going to be one of these three shapes, somehow twisted, or turned, bent, with something added to it, something taken away from it. That's all it is. You have to master these three shapes. Like I say, I know it's boring. It would, that's the boring part of drawing. But once you learn to draw, or once you have mastered drawing, then you're, you're flying. And what's the old saying? You have to crawl before you learn to walk. But I like to say you have to crawl before you learn to walk. 
You have to learn to walk before you run, and you have to learn to run before you fly. So, again, look around your room, your, your, your table, a table. If you're looking at it straight on in perspective, and I'll tell you about perspective, your legs here, maybe you see your other legs back there, and you put a cup or something on top of your table. Your table is just a thin, long rectangle, or I could have made a square like this, and I could have just chopped it like that. And this, and this, and then this, and then this, and then got rid of this, and you still have that table. Now, if I'm looking above the table, you see how we did the A, the letter A? I will do that again. I'll just use this to show you. I'll cut this off, and I'll chop this off right here, and then we have this part of this A, and then I'll put a leg right here, and a leg right here, and you won't see these legs, unless this is a glass table, you won't see these two legs back there. But you have a table going back in perspective. And perspective, to me, I like to say perspective is, is how you see something versus how I see something. So if you are, let's just say you were to give these tables a little bit longer leg. So if you are about like this height here, this is how you're going to see this table. This is your eye line. This, you, you, if you, you, if you have read or, or looked at any uh, drawing books, they talk about the eye line or the horizon line and the vanishing points. So this is how you see this table. But if I'm this tall and it could be like a little coffee table or something, and this is my shorthand for drawing people. So I, when I draw my comic books and I'll show you this stuff in, in a second, show you some stuff in a second. My eye line is way up here. So I'm looking, I'm above that table, so I'm looking down on it. And you always have that, that um, they, they show you the, the boxes floating in space or the boxes floating in the air. And they talk, talk about the eye line. And where did I go? I was, I was doing this. Let's put this one over here. So if my eye line is right across here, or eye line meaning this is where my eyes are. This is as tall as I am. And this is where my eyes are. This is what I'm gonna see. This time I'm gonna see that box. But from because I'm above this box, I'm gonna see the top of it. And because I'm below this box, I'm gonna see the bottom of it. And these are, all, once you do that, it becomes a cube. So I'm gonna see the bottom and I'm gonna see the top. Three dimensional because you see the one, two, three sides, okay? So that's all perspective is, but if I'm up, up here, then I'm gonna see the top of this, the top of this, and the top of that. So your perspective on something is different from my perspective. So whenever you draw something, you wanna draw it from the perspective of the viewer. So if I look at something um, like this house, because I'm not seeing the top of it and I can't see the bottom of it, so my eye line or that eye line is gonna be somewhere in here. For me because i'm looking straight on at it the same way i'm looking straight on at this box all right so let's get back into it as i say pretty much everything you want to draw in the house anyway because we live in a square house so we make square furniture is going to be like that let's just say a cell phone here's a cell phone it's rectangle they round it off you have your screen in here you have your button, depending on what type of, of cell phone you have. I'm looking for one of my cell phones. You might have an iPhone, you have an Android, but each one basically is just a rectangle. You know, some have the button, some you just tap. I think one, one of mine has a little button you turn on and then you screen, and now your screen's a little bigger. Rectangle. We've done a table, a chair. Uh, a same, so the same way that you would do the top of your box and I'm going to show you an easier way to do that. So this is just two rectangles put together, one leaning back and I have a chair. Now if I wanted to really detail that and you know make that a, a nice office chair or something then I would make it a little, little thicker, give some cushions in here, Maybe some arms here. And this is just, this is nothing but um, squares and rectangles. And then I would give it more, I would take the legs away. Take the legs away and then put the rollers 
on it. So it's gone from a regular little chair to a nice little office chair. I I want I really want to ink this stuff because I I, I as I say I do comics and usually after I draw something I like to ink it to show you. But for time's sake, I'm gonna resist trying to ink stuff. Okay, what else? Um, of course you know your television, your your laptop, um, your doorways, your windows. Mastering that square and learning to turn it is one of the most important things to do. So if you want to take this this square, I'm not gonna say cube. I'm just let's just say square, and I want to turn it so I can see like two sides. Simple thing. Just go like this. Make a rectangle, and then wherever this line is, right here, this little, little crease line, you either want to, you can put it in the center, you can put it on the end, or you can put it on the other end, and like that. So let's just say I'll do this. I should have brought it down a little bit. So now I have, it looks like, um, right now it's looking like a shipping container or the, the back of a truck, the, the, um, what do you call those the, the, um i don't know why i just can't get it out right now. An 18 wheeler the, the the back of an 18 wheeler this is yeah and the one thing that you need to do when you become artists or if you decide to become artists instead of looking at things you need to start looking at things how does this go it's like a wheel right here there's a wheel there that way because one day you might you might want to draw it this is a little short bed you might want to draw it so you know what it looks like and then there's but there's reference all over the the, the everywhere <laughs> internet so forth so on the back of the thing it's kind of low for for the actual truck itself but you get it you get it so let me draw do this again because i didn't mean to draw a truck i was, I was gonna stick with the house something simple so rectangle Put the side of the house or the back of the house here. Then I'll put a triangle right here. Take it over there. Now you have a house from that or triangle or the letter A. Like that. I'm not going to put the windows in. So it's easy to do that by just doing this. Now, going into perspective, uh, let me go uh, some more cube. Let's do some more squares, a box. Um, I think you kind of get that. You kind—I don't. It's just—it's just so many things that you can do with that. Um, let's go a little advanced real quick. Let's just do this—this this one thing real quick. So, trying to find the space. I want to do a big, big square. And you can use your whole paper for this. So then I want to do a little square in the center. Okay. Speaking of center, anytime you have a square cube square and you want to find the exact center you put the letter x in it i know it's a crooked x so wherever that is wherever that point is that is the center of your square so if i wanted to put like a window right here let's put it in here if i want to put a window right here in the center of this house i will find this x this is the center this is a little crooked but i'll find this and this is where my window can go right here It'll be in the center of the house. No matter how long it is, let's say this is a long wall, and I put this X here. It has to be from corner to corner, and this is my center. So if this is a long wall, and I'm gonna put a door right here or something right here. That's my center. All right. So same thing here. If I find the center of this. And let's just say I want to put up another square right here. And it's easy. Just go from line to line to line. All right. So what I'm doing is a hallway or an interior of the room. So we have this. Let's get rid of this. And you'll see it a little better. So this could be you going down the hallway. Say like you went to a, a hotel or a school or a hospital or something. And here's a door right here. Here's a door right here. Here's a door right here. Let's say there's, um, okay, more doors. The door right here, door right here. So you see, you're seeing 
what I'm saying. And here's the main door right here. You go to the dentist's office and you're like, I don't want to go to the dentist. And it's, which is the door? The main door is all the way down. So you got to walk way down that hallway and you can do lights, like ceiling lights. And this, we're just doing the same shape. They're just rectangles, okay? Now, maybe you want to put some squares in the floor. Now we're getting details. See, when I do comics, I do stuff like that. I just I just keep adding stuff to it. Because that's part of drawing comics. Over one more. Over here. So you get the point. You get the point. And some doorknobs. Some windows. And I know I'm still going... But I just want to get to show you just how easy it is to do something. And I'm going to ink that because I'm only 11 minutes into the video. I'm trying to keep the video short, even though I have a lot of, <clears throat> even though I have a lot of stuff I want to show you guys. But it's really, really, really simple to draw once you know, know that secret. And that secret is doing shapes. And shapes are just letters. No one showed you that, oh, the letters become the shapes. And the letters are the things that you draw all the time. So these doors have to stay on the same line. So even though I'm doing it with a pen, it might be a little crooked. Windows in the door. Windows in the door. This is when you have to use a ruler. Me and rulers are not friends because if you if you if you don't get it right, it's it's messed up. So but we're not getting into that in this video. We're just drawing. And don't expect to get something right the very first time. A lot of artists they get mad when they don't get something right and they wanna they wanna just just crumple the paper up and throw it away and walk away. But on the other hand, if you go outside in the backyard and you want to play basketball and you throw the ball up to the hoop and you miss it, you don't kick the ball into somebody else's yard and it's like, ah, I can't play this, this is too hard, and just walk away. You'll go and you'll pick up the ball and then you'll shoot again. Same thing if you want to learn a trick on your skateboard or your bicycle. You get all beat up and twisted up and cut up, and then you still get back up on that bike or that skateboard, and you'll try that trick. So what's harder to do, a uh, skateboard trick or, or go out there and chase a basketball all around all day or just sit down in a quiet place with a piece of paper and pencil and draw? So as I say, don't give up, especially if you have that fire inside you. Something I've always had when I was young, I, I just loved to draw. I, I saw my first comic book, and I'm, I didn't know that people actually drew comics until later in life. And I'm like, oh, wow, I want to do that. So that's how I became a comic book artist. I also taught, I, I taught in school, high school, <clears throat> junior high, and college. But now that I have stopped teaching, I am now teaching on YouTube. So I can reach more people and I can draw. I don't have to get dressed and be somewhere on time. I can just draw at my drawing table at my leisure and put out my videos so that people can see my stuff. All right, so now I did this, did this. I'm sorry, the paper, <clears throat> paper slides. So let's take this, all this other paper out behind it to keep it from sliding so much. Now, the one thing I want to show you about when you do this, when you do something like this, all you are doing is, I'm going to get my pen and go to red. All you are doing is just doing that triangle or that letter A. Can you see that? Here again, we've done that letter A and that letter A or that triangle, we just laid that triangle on its side. So let's go to the triangle. I think you got it with the squares. It's just, it's simple to, to do, you know, stuff. Once you learn how to do it, as I say, look at it. And that's his, his, that's his laptop. And maybe this is his, his picture of his family there and whatever else a glass of water so yeah it's very simple very simple once you learn these shapes i'll say this again and again it's the shapes you have to be able to take the shapes twist them bend them fold them turn them upside down right side up 
chop something off, add something to it, and then you're starting to draw. Okay, triangle. Let's go over to the back sheet. Triangle. Triangle or letter A. First letter of the alphabet. Easy to draw. Anytime you want to draw something going back into perspective, you've seen the old railroad track, the picture about the railroad tracks. That's what they say, perspective. When you go, when you see the railroad tracks going back, they go back in perspective. I'm not going to really do a detailed railroad track. And then they vanish at this point. And that's called the vanishing point. Because you can't see any further than that, the railroad tracks. But if you look at that, anytime you want to draw something going back in perspective or going back into that vanishing point, it's just the letter a that's all it is if i want to draw a table chairs whatever and i don't want to make it just square if i'm looking down on this cube like this you're looking down on this cube it's a square uh it's just regular square but if you turn it back if you if i turn it back enough it will go back like this and then i'm making my cube again it goes back like that in perspective so Going back in perspective is just, it's just the letter A. So simple. So simple. Okay. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So getting into perspective, you have your vanishing point. You have a one point perspective, which means all lines are going to go back to that, that, um, that point. The same way we did the house or the, the inside of the room. All lines go back to that one point. Okay. Now, going back there real, real, real quick. You don't have to have this square in the center of the square. This is just, just real, real quick. We have this, we have that. No, you don't have to have that in this back wall in the center. This back wall can be anywhere. It could be right here. And then you just do your lines to your thing. So what you're seeing is you have more wall on this side than you do on that side. So if I have my doors, my doors are going to be even thinner because I'm closer and these doors are going to be a little wider because I have more room to see these doors here. So you don't have to put, let's say there's a center door and there's your floor again. You don't have to put it right there in the center. I mean, I could put it way on the side here and draw one more real quick one. So I could put the door, <clears throat> this is my square. I can put the door, because this is your floor. This is your floor, this is your wall. So I can put it like right here, right? Well, yeah, let's put it right here, right here. And then I will go from there to there, to there, to there. And it's just, you're just pushing that wall over to the side more, or that back wall, yes, to the side more. Very simple. Okay, where were we? <clears throat> Anything you want to go back in perspective, you're drawing the letter A. Now, if you want um, longer, longer floor, let's just call it a floor for loss of words right now. You want to make a thin A. You want to make the A more thin. This represents you're getting higher in the air. If, if, if I'm in a helicopter, it goes back to this point. If I'm in a helicopter, or something flying over. Let's let's do this as a, as a road. Okay, this is a road. And you have your cars here, 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 and this is the city back here. Okay, so that road is going from you know the highway is going from wherever into the city. But because I did this letter A so thin. I'm now above it. So if I do this letter A wider, let's just say here is my vanishing point. I make it wider like this. My face is now right down on this road, this highway. And things will start getting wider as you get closer to it. These lines. And here's my city again. And then here's a, because I'm in a highway, here's a car that's about to come and just run over me. So same thing box is going to go this way and you already know how to do this by just the four z's and i put another box on top of this i'm going to slant it a little bit to give this car a little more a little more tail this and then 
Let me have your car. Let me ink this just a little bit. Just kind of a quick, quick car. I could make this a convertible. And since I did it, no. Yes, I should have just left it like that. Quick car, quick car, because you don't have time, Brian. Quick car in the road. And, um, yeah, so this means my, my little line should be a little smaller. But you get the point. And there's another car going right back here. A truck going back here. It's that 18-wheeler that I was drawing. Little smokestacks here. So yeah, it's you if you make it wider, then it puts you right down on the ground, closer to the ground on that um street street. If you make it thinner, it takes you way up. So anytime I want to draw a table or something, in my head I see that letter A. I see that letter. I'm not drawing the whole letter A, but I'm just I'm I'm Cutting it off, you know, in my mind, I know, okay, that's a letter A. I'm cutting it off, and here's my, my legs. <clears throat> if I draw a chair, or if I'm drawing anything going back into to, to this vanishing point, then you're using the letter A. You're making it narrow, or you're making it wider. Very, very, very simple. Let me get another piece of paper. Because here is, that's one point perspective. As I say, everything goes back to this one point. Everything goes back to this, these doors. If I made these doors, these doors are slanting. They're going back to that one point. Or at this point, it's windows. Is it going back to that one point? One point perspective. And there's a window here. There's a big window. Let's leave a space. Here's a window here. And in teaching, there, there's just so much. That's why it's really hard to just do like a 10-minute or 15-minute video because there's just so much to, to teach. All right. What was I going to do? Okay, the A or the um, triangle again. Let's do two point perspective. Very simple, very simple. Here is your eye line. Remember what the eye line is. If you were looking at it, this is where your eyes are going to be right here. So if you take that line, horizon line or eye line, and you put a line in the middle or wherever you want to put it, you can put it here, you can put it there, you can put it there, but we're just doing the middle. And you make a long triangle. Again, that letter A. If you if you hard if it's hard to do that, turn it upside down. And then you do it again to that point or whatever point. Most times <clears throat> it's e it's better to take one point off of your paper, which is exactly what I just did with the camera. Take one point way off your camera and have one point on off the camera, off the paper, and then at the other point. So now it continues to go. So these triangles, the lines for the triangles go right to that point. The line from these triangles or letter A goes to that point. So now you have your two point perspective and then you can do, that's your center. You can do like your house as we did before and your house will be more in perspective because your sides are going away. If you're standing right here looking at that center point this is what you're going to see all right so now i'll do the roof again remember x is my center so i'll go up here this is going to be the center point of my roof right there and then i'll go down everything has to go from that point to there and then i will just kind of mimic that part of the roof now i have a nice shaped house or barn now when i teach perspective especially uh, one point perspective i like to think of something exploding okay so if you take this and this was a bomb and it exploded so just like i'll do this i'll do this i'll do the, which is the, the plus symbol then i'll do the x and then many lines in between and as long as you are drawing let's say if i'm going to draw a building or something i'll put an extra line here as long as that building falls on that line like the top of that building, then you're good. Now to do the two point, you have to do another one back here somewhere, which I'm doing here, and then it has to follow that and go there. And then you can do your perfect cube squares or buildings. So if I'm going to do, 
let's just say this is a barn and the city's in the background, way in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Remember that you have the explosion. So lines are going to come off of this. Just a number of lines are going to come off of this. And you have to follow that line. So let's just say I do this and I follow one of these lines. And this is going to be the top of my, my building. So it's going to come down and then lines coming off of this little point, the explosion. And then I'll follow. It's got to go to that line and then I'll come down right here. And then maybe I'll do another another building back here or there could be a connection to the building as to follow that line. I'll do another taller one, real skinny, taller one here, going back to that line. Coming down, that's got to point out to that line as well. So this is where you use a ruler. You have to use your ruler, put it on this point here. You can hold your finger and then adjust this. As long as this, your finger stays right here and it holds this part, you can adjust this. And he said, okay, there it is, my point here. I draw, I want, you don't have to draw all the way through, but as long as it's here and here, it just, okay, that's right there. So then I'll point it right here on this, put my finger there, and I'll just kind of like wobble that there. And then I'll say, here it is right here. And you have to do that with all of your, your things to make it look right. So here's a building there, and then I'll just do another weird shaped building, like a maybe a mushroom kind of building, which, you know, won't be in perspective too much and you're seeing up under this mushroom building so you're going to see like this and you have another building here behind it so that's how you draw cities if you're going to draw something and then you can have your your spaceship your spaceships attacking the city spaceship spaceship draw another spaceship spaceship here behind the building <clears throat> attacking the city and they could you know just be destroying the city see back to comic books right there love comics city could be on fire people running in the streets so you'd have the streets going to be down here you won't see the people from way back here because he's a big building that's just but just to say oh these are people they're running in the streets oh the aliens are attacking the aliens are attacking they're just kind of like running away trying to run away so this is one reason why I love to do comics because my brain is just is always running and thinking of new stories. So you have your, and I know I'm moving fast, as I said, because of time. You have your A or triangle. You have that center, that line which breaks the two up. And then you're going back again like that. And that's two point perspective. Point here, point there, your eye line in the center. And then you're good to go. So um, I've already showed you about chairs and stuff. Anytime you want to see something that's not looking straight down, that has some going backness to it, shall we say, you're going to do that letter A again, A, and then cut it right here. So if I'm going to draw a chair from the back, it's going to be like this and be like this and be like that. And then I'll have my person sitting in the chair, my person. And when I do people, you can either do squares or you can do um, oval, ovals, circles. I know it's 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 it's, it's a lot wonky, but. Hopefully you get the point in the legs on the chairs. So what did we do? We did the squares. And, okay, now let's do circles. Let's get into circles. And let's turn this. A circle is the most easiest, but it's the hardest because nobody can actually draw a perfect circle. But don't worry about it. They have tools. <clears throat> Where's my tool at? To, when I get really serious about drawing circles, I have these tools here. So I have this circle. So. If you take the letter O or zero, which the zero is more of an oval, you know. So if you take a circle and you take a pressing tool, some kind of machine that's going to press, press this down, it's going to have the shape like this. It's going to end up in a shape like that. Because this thing is pressing down on it. So this is your oval, and this is used a lot. Maybe not the way you see it. It's just like 
maybe something getting squashed, but when you t take it and you, huh, how can I say? You have your circle, and the more you squash it, the more narrower it's going to become like that. Or where's my top? I, this, this is Play-Doh, Play-Doh top. You have your circle, anything that, that is round, you have your circle and flat. And then you move it a little bit this way, you move it a little bit more, you move it a little bit more, you move it a little bit more, you move it a little bit more until it's just a rectangle. Okay, so this is what I have here. This is basically you taking this and you're turning it all the way up until it's there. So you will need to be able to use that, but they also have a tool for that now, but it's usually never the size that you want. What you're doing is, let's just say when I did the glass, I'll take one of these, depending on, I don't have a glass. I don't have a glass. So, okay, anyway. So if I have a table right here, right? This is my table. And I'm looking straight at this. This is the way my glass is going to look like this, flat like that. Okay. And again, here is the letter A. Now, once I lift myself up, if I'm looking at this glass right here, I'm not going to see, you know, on the top of it. I'm not going to see the bottom of it. I'm right here along this line with the top of the glasses. Now, the moment I start lifting myself up, this glass is going to look like this. I'm going to start seeing the opening of this glass. Again, letter A. The more I look up, the more this glass is going to open itself up. Now, one thing about when you do this, the roundness, let's draw, let's do this. Let's just say I'm going to do this, a cylinder. Okay. The roundness on this edge has to be the same amount of roundness on that edge. All right, so if I'm going to do a glass, that glass cannot be flat like that. It has to be round. Just as round as this, this has to be as round as well. So now when I go on top of the glass, I get more. It's just less. It's just less of that A. That's all I'm seeing. So if I'm doing that letter A again, I'm just going to cut it off right here. All right now, but if it's on a table, the same way that you lift up to see the inside of the glass is the same way you have to lift up to see on top of that table. So because I'm not straight up and down on it, I'm going to see some of the front of that table like this. So this table is going to be like this. This table is going to be more, not as, just a little flatter than this. And this table is just flat. Now, cone, you're going to get a lot of shapes out of, not the cone, the cylinder. Now, at this point, all this is is a rectangle. Okay, this is just a rectangle. The only way that you can know that this is not flat is by the shadow. So, this is a rectangle, but if I add some shadow down here, then it starts to look like it's getting round because of the shadow. And that's all it is. So if I turn this over, you don't see it's flat again. If I turn, start turning it, you'll see that, that, that oval starting to appear and become rounder and rounder and rounder and rounder until you're looking right down on the top. My camera's right above. So now to do a cone, it's the same thing. You want to draw this, the oval, how much ever opening you want. And then you want to draw your letter A again or your triangle i just i'm just gonna say letter a because you've been drawing letters the letter a longer than you've been drawing triangles so here it is now you have a cone that cone could be a party hat it could be a, a nose and i'll draw a little crazy bird later and then you just put that roundness wherever you want to put that roundness right there it could be way down here it could be way up here so wherever you want it that's what it could be so like if i draw this i can go here do this, and this could be a soda, soda can. And then just to do detail, where's my little pen? You're going to have to have that lip right here, 
Let's show the can, maybe the other lip. We have however this opening is. And you have this. And see, this is what I'm saying about when you look at stuff, you have to kind of look at it. Because if you want to draw it and you want to really make it realistic, you have to be able to pull out a little more detail than the next person, and which makes your drawing a lot better than the average person's. And you can have however, and you can shoot this, you just popped it open and it's like fizzing and it's just ice cold. So it's, it's the, the condensation on it is going down. So as I say, when you look at something, look at it, just study it. You know, if you pick up something say, hmm, I never knew that this was like this and, I, and I keep it in your memory. And then next time you'll be able to draw better than the person. So if I drew this and you did a, a soda can and you just did this and you put a little piece in there and you put soda, you would say, oh, you know what? His looks a little better because, because just, I just added like detail. Like if you do a window, now we're talking about details. Let's say a window is your window right here. Okay. That's your average looking window. But if I make the frame a little better or the inside a little better, and then around here, And then I put another little piece around here. And then I frame it. Because of these added extra lines that I put in the window, makes it look a little better because the window is not just skinny lines. It, there's, there's depth to everything. There are edges to everything. Even though this is flat, if there's an edge to this ruler here. Hopefully my camera will go back and, and, and focus again. Sometimes it doesn't like to do that. So you're gonna do a lot of ovals. Um, even at that, you know, tuna can, a little, it's just how much you wanna chop it off represents whatever it is you're drawing. And tuna cans don't have the pop tops. So just like that. Or if I turn it over, okay. I can do this, and I can do this. I can make a tire out of this. I'm drawing a car, I do my tire, and how, however type of whatever rims you wanna put on there. And I have my tire. And then tires always have treads. So this is just making your tire look better. Or making your drawing look a little better just by adding that little bit of detail to it you will have a better looking picture but all that is is just it's just uh remembering how something is that's all you just as i said you look at it you memorize it you say oh okay this is, looks like this this looks like this this looks like that and then you add that to your drawing I'm running a little quickly here. And then if you wanted some shading, some shadow, another thing that you have to look at when you draw, like that. So there you, you have a tire. So it depends on how you turn this, 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 this over. Think of a flower, think of a, a flower. You have this one, this petal, this pedal, this pedal, this pedal, this pedal. So you're gonna to have to be able to turn this uh, this oval over in every kind of direction to make whatever. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's go over one more thing before we wrap it up. Because I said I wanted to draw that little crazy bird. Put some shapes together and draw that crazy bird. So 
Let's just do the bird now. Let's do the because I was gonna do a pencil in perspective, but it's just the letter A. That's all it is. A very thin letter A. So I'm gonna take a circle. I'm gonna take three circles. The one thing about a circle or a sphere is no matter how you look at it, how, if you're up on top, the bottom, wherever, it's going to look the same. So let me do this. Let me add a triangle here. I was going to put it there, but it's, it won't work. Triangle here, a triangle or the letter A. That's just a letter A. And I'm going to bring it in a little bit more instead of stopping it right there. I'm going to, I'm going to put it right here. So this is, this is my cone. And then I'm going to put it right here. So this is the point of that. Now, where's my cone at? What I did was I took a piece of paper and I rolled it up. Roll up, roll up, roll up. And then I taped it off. I cut it. I made this bottom really small. I cut it and I said, taped it up and now I have a cone. So if you are needing reference material, there's always something you can use as a reference material. You know, you have this, but it's not going to change no matter how you change, turn it or whatever. It's not going to change. The shape's never going to change. So we have this. So let's put a circle right here. So this is the center. Put a center line right here, which I should have put right here. Started with that one, but this is the side. So this is my line here, and I'll do this again. Anything you draw, especially when it turns to people, you want to do it, draw it with a center line. If you turn it around a little bit, that center line turns. If you turn it some more, that center line continues to turn. So let's do this. Add a circle here. So this is going to be, since it's turning more, circle, circle. And since it's right here, almost turn all the way, circle, circle. So let's do this. Let's start adding some stuff to it. So let's remember, you're adding, you're taking away, you're twisting, you're bending, you're turning. Any shapes. Let's do this. Draw this little crazy looking bird here with just shapes. And then we have some eyebrow and some eyes. And then so now I'm turning, and this is how you do character design, or if you want to get into like doing like animation. I'll bend this beak down a little bit. Or animation, you have to do this. And this is just seeing this is just seeing your shapes put together. And being able to rotate them around. So we got this. Bend his beak a little bit. And here's this little smile. Here's the eye. The hand is a little chin. And let's just say the hair starts here. And that's the one thing I when I, I remember I was drawing a comic book for this one little young he's a young young guy young guy, and he if you are into cartoons he loved Dragon Ball, and he gave me he, his character let's just say his guy's face was like this his his quick face but the guy had hair like like this, he just he just threw hair on him because he wanted to look like Goku or something, so he wanted me to redraw his character and I'm like what how in the world can I draw that hair from the side, from the back, some whatever? So if you are drawing characters, you have to be really mindful of how your hair goes. Because if you if you buy a, a model, let's say if you buy a, a Goku model or a model, an animation model from an animation character, I got to get this right. The model will come like this and the hair will be in pieces. And then you have to glue the hair down on the per on the character, but the hair is just not like this. It's not crazy like that. So if you're drawing a character, you have to be specific about how you want that hair to look because when you draw from the side, when you draw from the top, when you draw from the back, that hair has to be the same way all the time. So instead of doing this, you say, okay, I want one piece here, one piece there, one double piece here, and another piece here. So you just break those down into pieces and you just remember, okay, how does that look like from the back? It's going to look like this from the back. It's going to look like this from the top. So you have to take those shapes again, twist it, turn it, whatever, and then put it on that person's hair. And then you, every time you draw your character, he looks the same or she looks the same. So this here. And then that hair. 
see now I'm just going crazy here. I'm not I'm not doing what I'm seeing. And then this shape is like this. And then his little beak is down. And then like that. So whatever you draw, you're gonna have to learn to turn it, twist it, and so forth. And then eventually you will be able to do things like this. And let me let me grab my I had some drawings that I'm gonna show you. Okay, so regardless of what it is you want to draw, maybe you just want to draw, I'm gonna put these to the side. Maybe you just want to draw your, your favorite, you know, superhero in a in a nice cool position, or you want to do maybe children's books. You want you have a brother or sister that does all a bunch of crazy stuff. And you say, oh, you know what, I'm going to start drawing some of these crazy adventures. And if you see these all boxes, these presents are boxes. The cakes, are, the cake is ovals. The balloons are basically circles. Um, the arms and legs are cylinders. We have a cone hat for them. Everything that I'm teaching you is, is basically here. Or you want to get more advanced and do something like this. Same thing. Here you have your buildings in perspective. You have um, the square robot. Uh, you have the, the character designs, but that's 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 a deeper type of video. And, or you want to do something creative and simple like Joe Box right here. Once you study your shapes, you master your shapes, you bend, you twist, you add, you take away, you reverse, you go up, you go down. Then you'll be able to draw anything, anything your, imagina your imagination can come up with. You will be able to draw it. So, there's a lot more I want to show, but I think you have enough for now to get you going. And I have more on my YouTube channel, which I say I do YouTube channels now. So, if you see something, or if you want to continue to, to, to go deeper into drawing, you really have that fire like I do, then check out my YouTube channel and you can learn more of drawing. So, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed and that you walked away with something. And I'll see you later maybe maybe not but don't give up your dream regardless of what people say what they think you can do or can't do don't give up your dream if this is your dream never give it up all right see ya